All right, here's gonna be hopefully the last video for this section. So the last one we proved um, that the limit of sine of x over x was equal to one. Uh, then we looked at two other special limits. So it's mainly the first two that you're gonna see in problems. So let's see how to use them. So you're not gonna prove them over and over and over again. You're just gonna use them. <clears throat> so part A, limit as x goes to zero, of five times one minus cosine of x over x. Well, if you look at this, that's basically the special limit number two, right? So this on its own is gonna to go to zero, and the five just stays as a five. Five times zero, that's gonna give us zero. So that's how you can use this, this special limit. So if you can kind of isolate them in their own like fractions, then you can evaluate them just on their own and then see what you have left over. All right, so let's move on to part B. Uh, the tangent, we're gonna change that into sine over cosine. Because now your cosines cancel out and you're left with sine of theta over theta, which is what we just proved, and that's gonna equal one. All right, let's try this next one. This one's a little bit different. So this is where you're, sometimes you have to be a little creative in what you do. So we're still, we're still gonna play around with the tangent. So I'm gonna write that as sine squared over cosine squared because in the special limits, there's none of them have a tangent. So get rid of it, change it into something else. And then don't forget you have a theta still down here in the denominator. So when you're looking at this, go, okay, well, does this look kind of close to any of those special limits? Well, yeah, it looks kind of like that first one a little bit. It just has extra pieces. So let's split it off into its own fraction, and then all the extra stuff we'll put in, a, in, a, in another one. Kind of like you have a junk folder, we'll just throw all that stuff in the junk folder, or the junk fraction. So I just need one of the signs, and I also need that theta. So if I split off a sine of theta over theta from this fraction, I have a two, another sine, and I have a cosine squared that are left over. So this first fraction, that was what I kind of wanted to get off on its own because I know that its limit is equal to one. So that's just one. So then I just have this part, which I can now plug in the zero for theta because cosine of zero is just one. One squared is one. Sine of zero is zero, zero times two is zero. So if I simplify that down, that's just gonna give me zero. Okay. All right, part D, this one's a fun one. This is where you need to get your angle and your denominator to match up. So you have two options. You can either play with the angle or you can play with the denominator. And sometimes the angle is easy to play with, sometimes it's not. This one, it wouldn't be too bad. Uh, but the denominator, that's always easy to play around with. Because if you're trying to get them to match, I can just multiply the denominator by a two, and hey, look at that, they match up. Well, I can't just multiply by the denominator by a two. I'd have to do the same thing on top. So now I can do what I did before, kind of split off what I wanted to fit those special limits. 
and you don't have to do this either if you can see this right away and go, oh, hey, the answer is just this. That's totally fine. Um, so the sine 2 theta over 2 theta, they match up. So that fraction is just going to 1. The 2 stays as 2. So I end up with 2. All right, this last one, now we're going to use the properties. So this time you don't know what the function of f is or for g, but you know what their limits are. So we're just going to apply the properties straight to them. So f, the limit of f goes to 3 over 2. So since it's got a 4 multiplied to f, just multiply 4 to the limit. And you get 6. For b, it's the limit of f plus g. So take their limit values and add them up. And you end up with 2. For c, uh, you got to multiply them. So 3 over 4. For D, now you're dividing. <laughs> Just make sure you divide it in the same order. So in this case, the G limit's on top and the F limit is underneath. <clears throat> Don't get stuck into a mode where F is on top and G is always on bottom. It's not going to work that way. All right, so half over 3 halves is equal to 1 third. All right, and there you go. That's how to use the properties and those special limits. So go ahead and try the homework out. Uh, see how it goes. Email me if you have questions, um, and we'll see you in the next video.